Okay, everybody, I'm bringing you another video about the Boeing 737 Next Generation Series aircraft. I'm currently flying the Boeing 737-800 today in Flight Simulator X, the PMDG version, and I'll be conducting a Category 3 auto land, approach and auto land, uh, in marginal conditions, down to runway 22, with the ILS 22, for London Stansted Airport in the UK. So, uh, you can just see that I've selected that approach uh, there. Uh, we've checked that the runway's in there as well. And we'll be looking for the glide path as well. It should be three degrees. And the missed approach is in there as well. And the tracks will line up. We're looking at two, two, three degrees there. So, just putting the runway in the fixed page. Put a five nautical mile ring around that as our landing gear gate. And uh, a ten nautical mile ring there. So, at five miles, we want to be fully configured. We want to start configuring. You know, put the gear down, get the landing checklist out, and sort ourselves out for the landing. Uh, four guys page, just putting in the Q&H there to help us with the vertical profile. Everything's ISA, so there's no issue today. Um, I have to say that with the PMTG, uh, everything's been very accurate. Uh, the only thing that's not quite accurate at the moment, as you can see, is probably the, how it's entering the hold over Abbott. I mean, I don't know what it's doing. Um, it's just the computer in the game being a bit funny um, but at the end of the day in real life it's not like that it's a lot more accurate so I can't complain the computer program itself is very very good and I used it a lot to help myself during my type rating on the actual airplane I spent hours on this thing every day after simulator sessions before simulator sessions practicing emergencies uh, it's just an absolute for, for 60 quid this simulator is just fantastic um, so, as you see, I'm just tuning in the ILS frequencies now for Stansted. So, we're looking at 10.5 on either side with 16.25 for Barkway. So, there's the ILS identified in the Sierra X ray on both sides there on the uh, PFDs. And on the navigation displays, we see Barkway. Just to switch, uh, switch that over there is identified as well. So, that is the correct frequencies for Barkway. So, they've been all identified there. Um, so just checking out on the weights now, so we're landing with 4.2 tons estimated and we currently have 4.3 So that's a difference of 100 kilos. So that means we're going to be landing with 60 tons of the gross weight um, We're going to do a flaps 30 landing. So we'll select that as well in the box uh, So 142 knots on the VRF and 147 knots for the V fly speed there So that's all selected. Obviously you would double check this on the PFD display as well Now for the minimums So we're doing category 3 auto landing standard now, the planes I fly normally are rated down to 50 feet radio altimeter as the minimas with 200 meters uh, visibility as well as the minima. Um, that is a category 3A approach. So that's all set up now. Don't forget your auto brake setting. I'll put that down to 3. I know we can make that with 3. Uh, those I forgot to turn off earlier when I uh, took off the aircraft from Stansted. Um, I'll just do this quickly. I'm not using checklists on the game. Um, I'm just using my memory, to be honest. But you know what? It works. So there you go. So I selected the approach mode as well on the standby. Now what's really important about all of this is verifying you have correct sensing when engaging all of this, especially for a category uh, 3. Any, any ILS, to be honest, where it's marginal conditions. So I'm exiting the hold. Uh, now the exit's armed. I think you'll see I get a little bit impatient and I just end up using heading select giving myself an intercept heading and I just get low a little bit reducing the altitude down to 2,000 feet uh, something along the lines there and I just end up vertical speeding it. Um, this isn't too much of an interesting part of the video so what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip ahead a little bit um, and then I'll show you the interesting bits. I'll just fast forward this to be honest. Okay, so uh, we've fast forwarded now a little bit. So now I get a little bit impatient. I've given myself a radar vector uh, and I've gone direct to the Charlie Foxtrot point. But I've decided to set up a extended center line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Charlie Foxtrot 22 point, enter 223 degrees on the uh, intercept course because that is the uh, inbound track for the um, runway. So now I can just put an intercept heading onto that uh, extended center line there. And uh, then we can intercept that either with LNAV, uh, but to be honest, I just use Vorlock uh, because that is the most simple mode uh, to use for this. Um, obviously, we're getting a bit low, so I'm just reducing the vertical speed now because it's 2,500 feet and above, well, 2,500 feet 
as the platform altitude. I'm normally in standard. What they do is they'll give you descent to two thousand feet for an ILS anyway, um, and you're well above the MSAs, and you're well above. You know, you're safe. You're above all obstacles, so that's fine anyway. Now I'll give you a quick run through of what we're going to do. So basically, we're going to intercept the localizer first. We're going to make sure we have the correct sensing. So correct sensing. What does that mean? We're going to look for the localizer. We're, we're intercepting it from the left hand side okay so that means we want to see the localizer come in from our right hand side on the display on the pfd display and we want and we're coming in low so this means we need the glide slope to go above us and so far we can see that on the pfd we can see that on the standby and then we can see it on the first officer's display as well so that's on the captain's the, the standby and the first officer's display we have all three of those indications the train has been noted that's good. We've got the train selected and we've got the vertical situation display as well selected on the uh, pilot monitoring side. Just reducing the speed now to the up speed. Um, good rule of thumb is 15 miles, you know, but if you're low, it's not a big deal. 15 miles flaps one. It just keeps you safe, especially with the uh, aircraft with winglets um, from those high energy situations, especially high energy approaches. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to intercept this uh, with Vorlock. And once we're happy, we're going to bash the approach button. So there you go. There's Vorlock uh, armed already, as you can see in white on the, on the PFD under heading select. I'm just matching speed now to the one bug. Another good rule of thumb, 180 knots by 10 miles. Vorlock's captured. Great. Localizer captured. So we're going to set the runway heading of 223 degrees there on the heading display. Heading selector. Um, just reducing the vertical speed even more because we've got 100 feet to go to the platform altitude and I was like, you know, we're intercepting it from below. I might as well just keep this a really low rate of descent. Keeping that constant descent down to the runway. Um, so next trick we're going to do is we're going <clears> to <throat> arm approach. So we have the correct sensing now. The Vorlock is captured. We'll arm approach mode. There you go. Just double checking all of that there. Um, you know, uh, when we arm approach we will be engaging both autopilots as well. Well, arming both also by us. So one's already engaged, obviously, which is flying the aircraft for us. And then we're going to select Command B. So at this point, we'd say, approach mode on, Command A and B. It's as simple as that. That would be the cool. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to wait for the glide slope capture. Obviously, we're going to capture the glide slope most likely by the final approach fix um, at 2,500 feet. So that would be... There you go, glide slope is alive. Now, you can see the dot has filled in on the time of flight display. Uh, just taking the VSD as well. VSD looks good. Uh, vertical profile on the uh, on the navigation display is also looking good, so we're catching it. So yeah, that looks correct. Flaps two, we have the gentleman's flap setting again. And then flaps five will be the next one to come when we drop in, because when you drop, when you go from that transition to intercepting a glide slope and then dropping on a three degree path just drop the flaps fire just before you do that uh, because that will give you the drag and the required margin to slow down then so there you go dropping the flaps five glide slopes captured reducing the speed so the next step is to set the missed approach altitude so as you can see it's 3,000 feet here in Barkway basically it's the missed approach for the Stancil Runway 22 straight ahead uh, for about three miles and turn right Heading 3,000 feet to Barkway with a speed restriction of 185 knots though. Um, so my next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate a go-around procedure, actually, uh, with the Boeing 337 from an auto land condition with two autopilots engaged. But what it does is it flies the full go-around for you. Um, there's no manual reversion at all, uh, which is really nice. So five mile ring coming up now. So I'm going to put the landing gear down. Flaps 15. Matching the speed, and we're going to do landing checklist fast. So we're going to arm the uh, speed brake uh, starts, which is going to go continuous. Turn on all those landing lights. Just say we've been cleared to land, and to check the recall there. We've got the auto brake is three uh, set. Okay, speed's going down nicely. So we're going to go to flaps 30. Reduce the speeds to the V fly 147 knots, I believe it was. Very good. And you can see the flare has now been armed underneath the glide slope function. And we have a rollout function as well under the Vorlock uh, commands on the on the FMA annunciator and the PFD display, on the primary flight display. Which is good. So 30-30 with the green lights for the flaps. Landing lights are on. Uh, we've done everything. That's it. The landing checklist 1, is complete. 1,000 feet now. Uh, that is our IFR gate. 
and we have not busted it. We are stable. Everything's looking good. We've got the power set. Everything is in. So now our primary focus is to look at what's going on inside because uh, outside it's too early to tell. Uh, it is awful weather. I have set awful weather, awful visibility. It's right on the minimums. We won't be able to see the runway until the last few seconds. So the glide slope's looking good. Localizer looking good. It's tracking it nicely. The thrust is set appropriately. The 500 foot gate is stable. So that'll be a 500 continue cool from us there. So this would be 500 check passing 500 radio flat is armed. Uh, keep going down now. Uh, the next step really is just looking out and looking in. Normally the we would do something called a monitored approach for this where the first officer would be actually flying the approach and the captain would land the aircraft. So there you go, see the approach lights now? Very good. We're at 200 feet radio altimeter, so that's how low we are there. You'll have to excuse the... Uh, one plus 100 is checked, so you have to excuse the pappies, they will look very low on this. Um, I'm Minimums. unsure as to why that they do. 20. Minimums continue. 10. Flare is engaging. And touchdown. Speed brakes are up. Disconnect the autopilot. Also throttle. Maximum reverses. Reverses are normal. We've got 100 knots. 80 knots. And 60 knots. Want to break this arm? Manual braking. And we'll bring the aircraft to a halt. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you didn't know how to conduct an land, I hope this helps you. Um, if it didn't, let me know. If there's anything I can improve on, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks again.